Hello, everyone. Good morning. My name is Elizabeth, the Education Coordinator for Marlene's Market in Delhi. This morning's special guest that we have with us, we are so grateful, is the CEO of Bionic Brands, Ryan Johnston. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me. Oh, yes, not, um, no doubt. And um, you have some amazing information to share with us um, about um, feeding your binome um, with some lovely products. Yeah, excited to get underway. <clears throat> well, thank you for everyone for taking time out of your Saturday to, to join us. And um, um, thank you so much to Marlene's as well. We're a new product in their store. So really um, appreciate the opportunity to connect with the community and, and share a bit more about what we do and, and where our products come from and, and the family behind them that makes them. Um, again, my name is Ryan Johnston and I'm the co-founder and CEO of Biotic Brands. And we're a family run company based out of Northern California. And um, as the slide here shows, we're gonna ch chat a bit about today about the, the new wave of probiotic beverages that we offer um, and how that works to feed your microbiome. And I'll share just up front since um, Elizabeth had a question, I know other people oftentimes do as well. You know, what's the deal with this pelican that you see on the front page here that also lives on all of our bottles? And that's just a, an homage to coastal California where we come from, but really kind of the West Coast lifestyle that our products are born out of. And um, it's also our dad's favorite bird. So our company was started by my dad and brother who I'll share a bit more about in a second. Um, but lastly, we really wanted to create a beverage that um, you could enjoy like a pelican enjoys its meals, right? So if you ever watched a pelican eat, they go all in. And so we wanted to create a beverage that, you know, was, was gulp worthy, if you will, and could be enjoyed in that way while still supporting your health. So I know folks are still trickling in, but I'm gonna get underway and, and start moving through this. So I just want to start by, by sharing the smiling faces behind this brand. So this is the Johnston family. Um, myself, Ryan, my father, Michael, my brother, Adam, are really the ones that, that run the business. And these days, it's really um, Adam and I um, that, are, that are running the day-to-day -day of it. But um, we grew up as a really tight-knit family. Uh, we're a food family in a ton of ways. We're, we're avid gardeners and avid and, and adventurous cooks together. And um, one of the most important things to us was getting together to share family meals. And so that's really kind of, you know, food in so many ways is our love language. And that's really kind of the expression of what biotic is out into the world. And, you know, as being a family that grew up so close to quality ingredients and growing our ingredients and, and cooking all the time, um, we were oftentimes dismayed, frankly, when we would go to the grocery store and especially the beverage set and look and you look at these products and you go, oh man, that looks really great. And then you grab it and, you know, we're avid label readers and you turn it over and you go, you know, what's all this crap that they're hiding in here? You know, that's really unfortunate. And it's certainly easy to criticize sitting on the sidelines, but at some point we're like, you know, we really much, very much believe in the sort of Gandhi and be the change you want to see in the world, right? And there's there's certainly easier ways to make a living than in the food and beverage industry. But at some point we're like, you know, we want to, we want to be a part of changing this. And I don't mean that in any way as a call out to other brands, but really as a call in, right? Like there's a better way to offer healthier, healthier, cleaner, cleaner, um, more sustainable products. And that's really kind of the, the ethos that Biotic in so many ways is born out of. And we really want to be a leader in, in, in creating that in the food system and, and ultimately uplifting people's health as a result of it. So I'm going to start kind of macro picture and then we'll zoom into the products that we make a little bit. But, you know, it's important to start by just talking about the microbiome first. And, you know, I think probably important to define terms. So the gut microbiome is basically um, the, the living garden that exists within your gut, right? So there's about six pounds of non-human cells that live there. For every one cell in the human body, there's one non-human cell as well. And this community of life that lives within you is, is intimately, integrally a part of your overall experience and health as a human, right? It impacts pretty much every other system in your body. We talk about the gut microbiome, people oftentimes think about digestion, and that's certainly a part of it, but you know, that's where the majority of your immune system lives. Many of the different um, chemicals that are being processed in the gut very much impacts brain function as well, and either you know, brain, your brain functioning well or having brain fog or even depression. Um, oftentimes that originates from an imbalance in the gut. Metabolism and weight, I think is pretty straightforward. Um, you can eat really amazing food, but if your gut isn't functioning well, you're really not getting the full benefit of that. 
And then that oftentimes expresses in skin complexion as well. If your gut is out of balance, that oftentimes expresses actually through the complexion of your skin. And so, you know, every aspect of biotic is really designed to feed a healthy gut microbiome. That's really kind of the lens with which we look through when creating our products and doing our formulations. And that obviously includes, you know, incorporating good stuff. And we'll talk about that, you know, using only organic whole food ingredients. But it also means saying no to a lot of things as well. And so we, we do not use any refined sugars. Refined sugars are well studied to cause imbalances in the gut microbiome, as well as imbalances throughout the body, which I'll talk a bit more about later on. But we also don't use things like um, um, alternative sweeteners, right? These are the stevias and the monk fruits or the allulosis, urethritol. Um, all of these um, sweeteners that are kind of up and coming. And I think they seem really promising, right? Because they offer you this sensation of sweetness without um, delivering the calories. But the science is very much out whether those are good for you. And there's actually good reason to believe and kind of preliminary studies that they actually throw your gut microbiome out of balance, right? So, you know, if you have them on occasion, no big deal. But for us as a brand that's really here to support microbiome health, we've categorically decided to avoid all of those things because, you know, at this point, the science is just not conclusive that those are actually good for you. And then I love this kind of last quote, just to bring it home. You know, if your, microbi your, your microbial ecosystem in your gut is not healthy, you cannot be healthy, right? And I think that's a really important outlook to kind of maintain. And it's really kind of a North Star for us, right? So how do we, how do we support people in, in creating a healthier microbiome? And I just give a shout out to Dr. Mark Hyman, um, as a resource for folks who maybe want to go deeper into learning about both the impacts of sugar on the body, he's got some great writings on that, but also the, the importance and the kind of multifaceted impacts of microbiome health. Again, starting big picture and just talking about the power of fermented foods, um, I wanted to share this, this seminal study, research study that came out of Stanford University um, last summer. And Kind of at a high level, the research findings in a study, they, they put people on a 10-week diet of both high fermented foods and high fiber foods. And they kind of went into it with the thinking that the high fiber foods would actually see kind of better results. And they were surprised to see that after 10 weeks on a high fermented food diet, they saw marked reductions in 10 inflammatory biomarkers, right? So it's really strong proof that within like a 10-week dietary intervention, you can create pretty dramatic changes within the body, right? And this is not just for um, kind of like brine products like ours or fermented beverages like ours, but it included, you know, you can see cottage cheese, kimchi, sauerkraut, yogurts, kefirs, really kind of the defining characteristics of the fermented products that were being consumed during the study was that they were fermented, obviously. But the second big one was that they were low sugar as well. So fermented and low sugar were the two kind of key ingredients. And within that, it was pretty diverse, but they saw this really, um, positive impact on the overall um, health of the body. And um, it actually changed the immune status of the overall body. And I bring this up to share that in a lot of ways, you know, innovation or the future is in the past, right? Like we as a culture, we as a human culture on our planet have had fermented foods as a cornerstone of our diet for, for many, many, many generations. And it's only recently um, within like kind of the standard American diet paradigm that fermented foods have kind of fallen away. And so a study like this really kind of points to the importance of reincorporating these fermented foods into our diets on a regular basis. They found a higher level of the fermented foods had a better result, right? And so it's really about eating these and again, having them on, on as much as a daily basis. Um, and biotic, you know, I think our role to play in this is like, these foods oftentimes have really strong flavors that aren't everybody's cup of tea, right? Like not everybody is excited to get out of bed and eat a heaping spoonful of sauerkraut, right? And so with our product, we really kind of wanted to balance this kind of authentic fermented product made with whole food ingredients, but also try and make it with flavor profiles that are really accessible and that people can enjoy as part of a busy modern lifestyle, right? And really look forward to enjoying those products. And so that's kind of how we think about our products and the overall mix of the, the sorry, sort of food landscape. Again, to sort of like categorize the need here, right? Like you can just think of it in this way, right? You cannot be at your best if your gut microbiome is out of balance. I think we've all kind of had those days where we're feeling a little bit bloated or um, a little like morning sickness, nausea, like it really kind of drains you um, and as an individual and you can't bring your best um, to your day. 
And I think the statistic at the top is like pretty, you know, eye opening in a lot of ways that 61% of Americans um, experience GI issues on, on a weekly basis, right? And so this is really, really, really widespread. And then looking at the second point here, you know, those GI issues can oftentimes be the root of like a whole myriad of other diseases, right? Depression, anxiety, irritable bowel syndrome, cancers even, right? So like, again, like if we don't address this sort of fundamental issue, you have all these kind of other issues that are built on top of it. And we end up sometimes as a culture addressing the symptoms, but oftentimes the root issue is actually in an imbalance in the gut. And, you know, I like this quote, probiotics are the next vitamins. And I think what he's sort of getting at there is that if you don't have a healthy gut microbiome, you really can't get the most out of the nutrition that are going in your body. And most Americans are pretty aware of this. I mean, you can see close to 80% of Americans perceive um, probiotics to have benefits to their digestive health as well, right? And so like, it's pretty well studied that probiotics um, benefit the host and um, can increase overall health. So to speak a bit about what makes Biotic different and, you know, the, the actual products that we create. So um, we use only the cleanest organic whole food ingredients, and then we're fermenting those with science-backed probiotic species. And I'll go into that a little bit more about the cultures that we're using in a second. Um, but what really sets our products apart from, say, a kombucha is that our fermentations are fueled by sliced carrots or beets rather than refined sugar. And so that's pretty different than a kombucha or a water keeper. And then we're flavoring those after fermentation with sliced or with uh, pressed fruits and roots as well, cold pressed fruits and roots. And so in doing so, we've overcome the two biggest drawbacks to kombucha, right? And that's the high levels of sugar and that sort of funky, strong vinegar taste that some portion of the population just like kind of can't get into. 100% um, of the ingredients we're using are organic as well. And most of them arrive fresh to our Petaluma fermentary. Uh, we're based up in Northern California in Sonoma County. Um, and we're slicing and pressing those ourselves to deliver kind of an unmatched level of quality into our beverages. So when we talk about kind of like mechanisms of action and like how biotic works to feed your microbiome, there's really kind of three aspects to that that all work synergistically and they're all kind of building on each other, right? So the first is prebiotics, right? And before I get into what each one of these is, the way to kind of think about this is prebiotics are the food, probiotics, the living organisms, and then postbiotics are the metabolites or the things that actually come from the digestion by those probiotics. And each one of them has benefits to the host, which is us, right? Like this is happening in our microbiomes and our guts. So prebiotics in this case, again, are the foods. These are the beneficial things that you're putting in your body. These are oftentimes fibers, or in the case of our products, they're the, the diverse polyphenols that are coming from the cold pressed juices, and also the sliced carrots and beets that we're using to drive our fermentation. And these compounds are well understood to support beneficial bacteria in your gut. When you think about prebiotics and how to incorporate prebiotics into your, into your lifestyle, um, into your diet, it's really all about diversity. If you have a diverse number of prebiotics that go into your body, then you're gonna have a more diverse um, set of probiotics needed to to digest them basically, more diverse life in the gut, or by eating diversely, you're supporting a diverse microbiome, right? And so this is where that concept of eating the rainbow comes from. And we try and do that in our beverages as well, having many different flavors, many different whole food ingredients going into those to support that diversity. And then probiotics, these are literally the, the live cultures, the living species that are well studied to provide benefit to the host, which is us, right? Um, and so in our case, we're using seven scientifically backed species of bacteria um, to drive our fermentations. And these are the living little helpers um, that go into our guts. And they're sometimes going into our guts and maybe um, actually setting up shop and, and, and living there. Or actually, sometimes many of these are actually doing the work as they sort of pass through your body as well. But that's what the probiotics are, they're actually, actually the living little helpers. And then again, as I mentioned, the postbiotics. And you really only get postbiotics from authentically fermented foods, right? You're not getting postbiotics if you're taking a probiotic supplement, right? These are the metabolites or the compounds that are created through the fermentation process. So we're talking about organic acids, enzymes. There's oftentimes B vitamins that are produced through this whole fermentation process. And these byproducts support detoxification, they aid in digestion, and they also help suppress harmful, harmful populations of bacteria in your gut as well to keep everything in balance. And again, you know, our name biotic really kind of comes out of this idea that 
all three of these biotics can be found um, in our beverages. So by way of terms, you know, like what is this thing that biotic makes, right? And so the product itself um, and the sort of like traditional lineage that it comes out of is, is kvass, right? So it's not a kombucha. It's a, it's a different type of um, fermented beverage altogether, which is a kvass. Um, and that's a traditional cultured beverage. Historically, it's usually made from either um, bread or in our case, um, we kind of come out of the lineage from our Polish lineage of, of using beets and sliced beets to drive the fermentation. Um, and this has been a fermented drink that's been consumed by Eastern Europeans for, for generations, right? And so Biotic is sort of like with others brought that to the United States. And um, you can see here, there's kind of Biotic kvass and what that looks like versus traditional kvass. And, um, and then kombucha next to it, oops. Getting ahead of ourselves here. Um, so I think this is kind of a useful way um, just to kind of understand these three next to each other, right? So biotic kvass, biotic has really kind of pioneered the use of um, going beyond just using beets to drive our fermentation. And we've, we've created what we call West Coast kvass, which uses sliced organic carrots as well. And then it's flavored with those cold pressed juices. Um, and so some portion of the population loves beets and we love those folks. Beets is still one of our favorite flavors as well. And we make a classic beet kvass, but there's a lot of folks out there that like when they drink beets, they taste dirt. And so we really wanted to like expand our offering to reach different audiences as well. And so we do that with the carrots and the cold pressed juices. Um, a traditional kvass, and for anybody who's tuning in from the greater Seattle area, like we give a, a shout out to Iggy's up in that area. They make a more kind of traditional kvass, right? And another beautiful, um, delicious traditional kvass. Um, and then kombucha is, I think many people are familiar with many of the kombuchas that are out there on the market. I'll talk a little bit more about kind of how biotic differs from a lot of those kombuchas in a second. But when it comes to the fermentation composition, um, again, we are using, we are, we are inoculating our fermentations using well-studied species of um, gut healthy bacteria. We're doing this for two main reasons. One reason is that it allows the, the kind of creates a, a softer, more approachable flavor and it creates um, consistency in our batches from batch to batch as well. So if you taste our product one day and you're like, I love this, well, we wanna deliver that to you every time you come back as well. And each batch shouldn't be dramatically different. Um, but the other big part of that as well is that um, compared to wild fermentation, in wild fermentation, you kind of don't know what the species composition is each time. And so if we're aiming to deliver beneficial probiotics to you, you know, not all fermentation species are necessarily beneficial. And so we've sort of selected those that are known to be beneficial to the host and we're working with those species. And so you know that you're getting actually many of the same species that you'd find in a probiotic supplement pill, but you're getting them in this whole food form um, kind of grown out through active fermentation. This contrast we're only using and kvass only uses bacteria species compared to kombucha, which is a, uses a symbiotic culture of yeast and bacteria. When you have yeast in your fermentation, you then get alcohol which is challenging for some folks. But then when you get alcohol, the next step in that sort of fermentation process is vinegar, right? Alcohol is consumed and then it's turned into vinegar. And that gives kombucha that kind of strong vinegar flavor that some people love and that's awesome, but many people just kind of can't get behind that. You know, kombucha still has about 20% household penetration um, in our country. And I think for many folks, uh, that's because of that strong vinegar flavor. And a lot of kombuchas have done different things to kind of try and soften that, but in a lot of ways they're kind of moving away from the core kombucha and what kombucha is and it's like most like essential form, right? Um, and so, you know, if you're gonna drink kombucha, I give a shout out to like the GT's brand that's out there. It's still a very authentic kombucha. Um, and I think they do a great job making that kombucha. Um, but for a lot of folks that just doesn't sit well with their bodies. Um, you can see the flavor profile across the board there. Traditional kvasses are a lot, a lot of times earthy. Um, they can be sour. They can have kind of a strong flavor to them. In contrast, we've really tried to create a light, crisp, clean flavor profile. And then as mentioned, um, the uh, kombuchas oftentimes have that kind of funky vinegar, sweet thing going on, which again, some people love and that's awesome. Um, but for many folks, it's just not a, a flavor that they're, they're super excited about. And then we are a bit different than traditional kvass too, in that we actually carbonate our products as well. Um, bubbles are just fun and they're enjoyable to consume. And so we've, we've added a light sparkling to them. They're actually kind of, um, kind of less aggressively sparkling than a lot of kombuchas that are out there because kombuchas are continuing to ferment in the bottle and create CO2 again, because of the yeast, um, biotic does not have that going on. Um, 
but a little bit of sparkling goes a long ways to kind of create mouthfeel and texture. And again, our goal um, with creating this kvass is like creating an avenue for people to incorporate fermented whole food ingredients, um, again, as part of a busy modern lifestyle. And then I just wanna share this as well for folks, if you wanna experiment with it, you know, if you're like me, you're like, I, I hear what you're saying, but like, I kinda of wanna roll up my sleeves and get in and like, but I wanna actually make some of this stuff. So here's a nice, simple recipe um, for making a, a more traditional um, beet kvass, right? And what's, what's really beautiful and elegant about kvass is it's just like, it's so simple and pure in its ingredients, right? Um, so in the case here, you can see three large beets, preferably organic. Um, you're leaving the skin on those. You're actually cutting those up into chunks, you know, maybe one inch by one inch or so, as you can see here in the jar. Putting in a jar, you're pouring filtered water on top of that. An important aspect of that filtered water is that you are not using water that has um, chlorine in it. Um, that will actually, you know, slow down your fermentation or inhibit the fermentation altogether. And then you're adding a bit of salt in there as well. And the salt is gonna skew um, the population of microbes that, that take root, similar to making a sauerkraut. Um, it's gonna reduce the, the bugs that you don't want in there during that fermentation process. Um, put this in a dark place at a direct sunlight. You want it to be warm, maybe 60 to 80 degrees. And then um, it's gonna take about five to seven days to ferment. That's gonna vary a little bit because the microbial species that are in there um, are gonna be a little different. This is a wild fermented product at this point. Um, but kind of taste it throughout the process and just kind of check in with it and see how it evolves. Some people like it a little bit younger, if you will. It's a little brighter, a little fresher. Um, and some people like to let it go really sour as well. So at this point, um, at scale, our fermentation process looks a bit different than this, right? We're using big stainless tanks to drive that fermentation. As I mentioned earlier, we're inoculating um, with the microbe species that are, that are doing their work. Um, but this is a really wonderful way. And this is where we started as well. Um, in our whole process. And so encourage folks to, to check that out. And this, this, um, this um, recipe, and you can find the whole recipe and all the steps there at, at Food52, if you just type Food52 beet kvass, um, that's a great resource. And then by way of comparison, I think, you know, this is important for folks to understand, you know, I'm not putting anything on here that you couldn't find by reading these other brands' websites or reading their labels. Um, but I think, you know, for folks to under, understand the, the role or the place that Biotic is really aiming to play and the value that we bring to the probiotic beverage category, I think it's important to understand our beverages next to the category leaders. Um, it's worth noting as well that these three products that are next to us or these three companies next to us represent about 75% of the overall sales in the fermented beverage category. So these are really the market leaders and kind of the dominant forces that are out there right now. Um, and I think Biotic has real value to bring um, next to these market leaders. Not to say that these are bad products in any way, but I think as an informed consumer, um, it's really about kind of figuring out which is best for you. And I think we offer some different value or like different um, benefits um, than some of these other ones that um, we were looking for as a family, and I think many folks are as well. Other folks are as well. So just starting right there at the top, um, you can see across the board calories um, as well as sugar. For me, I'm not a hater on sugar overall. I mean, I think we would all be better off to reduce our sugar intake. And to me, it's really about being discerning about when you take that sugar in, right? So for instance, like if I'm going to enjoy like a really delicious piece of chocolate or I'm going to indulge in a, you know, a nice homemade cookie or some ice cream or something like that, that's a great place to enjoy the sugar, right? To me, that's like a high value place to enjoy sugar. Those things are not great without sugar, right? But the challenge with drinking the sugar in a beverage is that it actually has the biggest impact on your body, right? You drink sugar in a liquid form, it goes into your digestion and it's very quick to then go into your bloodstream and spike your blood glucose. And then that goes down and crashes and it causes this whole kind of roller coaster effect. Um, and there's a lot of great work out there on how that throws your whole hormone balance out of whack, um, but also causes the sort of like, you know, brain crash and brain fog that many people will kind of feel in the afternoon as well. Right. So again, my take is like, if you're going to have sugar, there's better places to do it than in your beverage and you can get your tasty probiotics um, and avoid that sugar altogether. Um, Going down the list as well, I think another big differentiator for Biotic is that we don't have any caffeine. Kombucha is made from a sweet tea. And so it's oftentimes using green or black tea um, in that fermentation process. 
as we learn more and more, we culturally learn more and more about the importance of sleep. Caffeine is oftentimes like, you know, like my wife, for instance, if she drinks a kombucha in the afternoon, when she lays her head down at night, she still feels that caffeine in her, in her veins, right? She's, she's pretty sensitive to that. Caffeine has a half-life of about eight hours, right? So if you drink a kombucha in the afternoon, chances are like some part of that caffeine is still in your body and maybe um, hampering your sleep when you, when you go to uh, bed at night. So biotic has no caffeine, no alcohol as well. I mentioned that earlier, no yeast, that means no alcohol. That's been a challenge for a lot of folks um, in kombucha and kombucha's had some real kind of, you know, challenges with that as an industry in the past. Um, I bring up the alcohol particularly as well, because you saw earlier on a, a picture of my nephew enjoying this product as well. And I think um, there's a great opportunity to introduce these fermented foods to kids and help them kind of um, bring their palates around and like learn to love these products earlier on. It's obviously helping their gut microbiome, but I think the earlier you introduce these foods and kind of create a cultural connection to them, um, the better. And I'm of that age where I have a whole bunch of friends that now have kids and I'm going to be a father in the fall. And, you know, it's really amazing to be able to give kids these products, knowing that it doesn't have caffeine, it doesn't have alcohol, and it doesn't have high levels of sugar, which I think makes it a much more family-friendly product than a lot of the kombuchas that are on the market. As mentioned before, we don't use alternative sweeteners. We also don't use natural flavors. That's a big one for me. Natural flavors are a complete black box ingredient out there, and they show up all too often in um, different beverages. I know they sound really benign, natural flavors, but even for us as producers, if I as a producer go to the natural flavor producers and say, hey, I'm interested in using your, I don't know, citrus flavor, what's in that product? Oftentimes they won't tell us. It's a black box, right? And they say, it's a trade secret, we can't tell you. And I don't know how that exists in our food system, but I think it's completely wrong. And so we have completely stayed away from using natural flavors altogether for that reason. And my concern is not that, well, the concern is that like, oftentimes that might be a citrus flavor or the classic one is like a raspberry flavor, but in fact, there's no raspberry in it, right? That raspberry flavor is coming from a myriad of other things. It's a highly processed ingredient that's created in the lab and it's not a flavor um, that comes from real food. And oftentimes those natural flavors are used to mask less quality ingredients, right? And so we're really about mindfully stores, minimally processed ingredients and kind of like working from that place. And those things have good flavors in and of themselves. Um, and then I think I'll touch on these other aspects as we get a little bit further down. I guess I will say while we're here as well, uh, we are a certified vegan product as well. So all of the probiotic cultures we're using are from, are from vegan sources as well. Um, and that's really meaningful to a lot of folks. And the last price down, last piece on the very bottom there is price. And I guess I'll just say on this, like, we really, you know, fully acknowledge that this is still a premium product in a lot of ways. And that said, like we want to be price comparable with the leaders that are out there as well to try and make it as accessible as possible. We're still a very tiny player in the overall beverage space. You can find our products up and down the West Coast at this point, but you know, in the overall world of beverage, um, Biotic is still very small. But it's important to us to be, you know, about price competitive, um, just to make again our products accessible for people to enjoy them. By way of differentiation as well, like I don't think we could talk about what we do as a brand without kind of also touching on um, these other aspects as well. And so I was an environmental studies major. My brother was an environmental studies major. Um, this sort of purpose-driven like piece of things is, is kind of core to what we do. Um, and the act of eating is one of the most intimate connections that we have with our overall environment, right? We're like literally taking the environment and putting it into our bodies when we eat every day, right? Um, and then the ways that we choose to feed ourselves have an incredible impact on the wider ecosystem, right? Like what is that farming doing? Like what are your food choices doing in terms of exerting an impact back out um, onto the wider world, right? And so there's this, this whole relationship that's going on there that I think foods, food companies um, have an amazing role to play and take leadership in, in a regenerative future. So our mission is to regenerate living systems starting with the human microbiome. And the idea there is that First and foremost, like we as a whole system, we as individuals as a whole system, like if this system isn't in balance, then we can't show up and be our most creative and tenacious expressions of ourselves to, to, to address the, the social and environmental challenges of our times, right? So if we aren't our best version, then we're not gonna bring forward our best um, to create a better future. So it's really about starting here first and foremost. 
But then as a company too, if we think about ourselves as a nested system, an ecosystem within a bigger ecosystem, like are we as a company creating conditions conducive for life with how we're sourcing all of our ingredients, our packaging and so on and so forth, right? And, you know, this is, it's not, it's not a yes or no answer. Right? It's a striving and it's a mission that we're headed on. But our goal really is to incorporate all of these practices into what we do. So, you know, we're taking steps toward that regenerative future and, and creating a future that we want our kids to live into as well. And so in, in 2020, we became a certified B Corp as well, which is a pretty rigorous third party process. Um, kind of looking at all facets, social and environmental of your business. So we're really, we're really honored to have um, earned that certification and, you know, be part of a great many other wonderful companies um, that are helping lead the way on this charge. Um, and then getting down to just kind of the specifics for, for biotic um, and some of the ways that we're, we're thinking about in implementing this into our business. So um, 100% organic in our sourcing. Um, that's a hard line for us, but a nice well-lit line in the sand that we've drawn. Um, because we're not using sugar and tea to drive our fermentations, we're able to have a much more regional footprint in terms of our sourcing. And so 85% of our ingredients by weight are actually grown from within California. That allows us to keep our sourcing much closer to home. As I mentioned earlier, pretty much almost everything we work with arrives to our fermentary fresh when we're slicing it and pressing it ourselves. Um, we have a growing number of farmer direct sourcing relationships as well. And these are really focused on regenerative agriculture and upcycling. And I wanna kind of unpack those different terms. So the farmer direct piece of things means that there's not middlemen in between us and our relationship to the farmers. And that means that, you know, for every dollar that we spend, more of that dollar goes into the farmer's pocket, which is really, really important, right? In the food system. And we're using that dollar to vote or uplift farmers that are really leaders um, in, in better farming practices, right? So regenerative agriculture um, has the opportunity to, you know, it's basically going beyond sustainable to like, how do we cultivate the land in a way that's increasing its capacity to support life through time, right? So holding more water in the soil, putting more carbon into the soil, um, increasing fertility through time. Agriculture for a long time has been one of the most destructive forces on the planet, but it also has the opportunity to be one of the most regenerating forces on the planet. And so, again, we're really working, trying, aiming to work with farmers that are implementing those practices. And before Biotic, that was really the background that I came out of, I was a regenerative farm planner. And so it's a real passion of mine. And I, I, I love working with those farmers um, and bringing them into our sourcing network. And the other half of regenerative, like there's the opportunity to grow ingredients better, but the other half of that too is reducing food waste in the system as well, right? Um, so that's where the upcycling piece comes in as well. And what upcycling looks like basically is that we work with a really wonderful sourcing partner that's kind of a matchmaker. And so for instance, like um, this year, tangerines, right? A lot of the tangerines in the Southern part of California got sunburned for instance, right? They're sunburned, that means that they can't go to market and they would otherwise go to being waste, right? And so this partner comes in and they, um, basically serve as, as a matchmaker again, they help find markets for those, the produce, right? So we come in and we're gonna juice them. So we're, we don't mind if there's a little bit of sunburn on there. In fact, when a plant has that um, bit of stress in its life, it's actually found that it might be more nutrient dense because it's working to kind of fight off that stressor, right? Um, and so we come and we give those farmers a market um, for those crops that otherwise might've gone to waste. Something like a third of overall global food production goes to waste each year. It's one of the biggest contributors to greenhouse gas emissions and climate change, right? So finding markets for um, that produce is incredibly important. And you can imagine as well, how important that is for those farmers as well that would have lost out on that revenue altogether, right? So to be able to give them a market for that is incredibly impactful. So regenerative agriculture and upcycling to me are kind of like the, they're, they're the two sides of the same coin in terms of better sourcing practices. Um, and so we're using those practices um, for our sourcing of carrots, beets, citrus, ginger are all coming from direct farm um, sourcing, um, most of which again are in California. And then the other piece um, is as part of the B Corp community, we've committed to be net carbon zero in our emissions by 2030. This is a clear declarative stance um, that aligns with the goals of the IP IPCC. Um, and so the ways that we've kind of taken steps toward doing that now is today, our manufacturing facility, our fermentary is run by 100% renewable energy. 
We as a facility pr produce zero food waste. So there's this, the food waste upstream from us, but then there's also the food waste that comes out of the fermentary, right? And totally awesome if that food waste goes and becomes composted. But, you know, I think it's really our job to kind of look across um, the food system and go, what's the highest use of that quote unquote waste, right? Because waste is a human construct. Waste doesn't exist in nature, right? And so for us, we, we've partnered with Green Star Farm. And we're actually upcycling that animal feed. So it's coming out, we have this amazingly um, fiber rich and probiotic rich byproduct that goes to pastured animal feed. And it's going to, to feed a farm that's using amazing regenerative grazing practices, right? And so they're moving their animals across the landscape like historic herds of animals would have moved across the landscape, which is in turn healing the landscape, right? And so we love having that partnership and we're able to then um, feed their animals with our byproducts. And then I think it's worth noting as well that our glass, the caps and all of our labels are produced within the United States as well. We're kind of unique in that way. Um, our bottles are actually manufactured right here in California as well and made out of 70% recycled glass. Um, we choose glass because it's still the leader in terms of non-toxic packaging and it can be recycled infinitely. And so we really like it for that reason. And then people oftentimes have questions about this as well. And so we're using triple filtered water that goes into our products. This is kind of a, a point of contention in the beverage industry is as, as many beverage producers are using just simply tap water going into their product. There's no filtration, um, which has you know, obvious concerns to it. So triple filtered water. Um, and thankfully, because of the water that we, we source um, here in Sonoma County, it's actually carbon neutral water as well. And so kind of small footnote, but an incredible amount of energy goes into moving water throughout the human infrastructure as well. And so we're really fortunate because of the municipalities that we work with here locally, um, that that water is in fact um, carbon neutral as well. So these are some of the ways that we're stepping toward this goal of being carbon um, net zero. Um, and still, you know, a lot of journey ahead, but as a small company, I feel really proud of the steps we've taken thus far. And by way of wrapping up here, I think the last thing I'll leave you all with is um, a sneak peek at um, our new labels, which will be coming out in May of this year, and some reformulations that we have going on as well. And so you'll see on the front panel, you know, there's still that kind of iconic orange that's really easy to find. So look for that in the beverage set. We typically live next to the kombucha um, in the grocery store. Um, you'll have this big, bright block of orange, which, you know, we wanted to be kind of as a, as a lighthouse, if you will, a beacon. Um, of the healthy beverage, so, so look for that. Um, and you'll see as well that we've kind of rejigged the front panel language as well. Still the same formulations, but we wanted to create um, uh, a product that was like a little bit easier to find and say. So um, bubbly probiotic refresher is kind of the noun that this thing is now. And then you can see the flavors going right up top. And you'll also see that raw West Coast kvass has made its way onto the front panel as well. Um, we're now the largest kvass producer in the country, which is pretty cool. Um, and we're working along with other great producers like Iggy's to really kind of create a category of kvass, right? And so kvass has a place to play, right? Yes, as a, as a category manager in a grocery store, like have your water keepers, have your kombuchas, but have your kvass as well, because there's, there's really unique value um, to be offered out of that product type. So we wanted to put that back on the front labels. And then the last thing I'll say is um, keep an eye out for some exciting new flavors as well. We've reformulated a couple of our flavors. So the spicy ginger product, um, what people love about that is that authentic cold pressed ginger flavor. So that's still totally there, but we've balanced it with a touch of uh, peach puree as well. And so that allows us to go even deeper on the spicy ginger side of things. Still very ginger forward, but it's kind of rounded out by some beautiful organic California peaches. The lime product, which has zero total sugar in it, which is pretty cool, um, has got a little um, Utah sourced magnesium rich electrolyte blend added to it as well. So you could kind of think of this as like an all natural Gatorade in a way, again, with zero total sugar and only cold pressed juices going into it. But those electrolytes give it, you know, a little extra hydrating power as well. And so this is a great way to start your day in the morning to rehydrate, maybe after your morning coffee as well, or post-workout. And I will say for those of you as well that um, enjoy alcohol, um, it's kind of like a, a salty, slightly salty margarita 
already all mixed up, right? So you can do a, a lot of a margarita mixes out there, right? Or, or loaded again with sugar and all kinds of crap. And so um, people oftentimes will use our products as, as drink mixers and that's a great way to go as well. If you're gonna drink, I think that's one of the healthiest ways to go about it. And then tropical pineapple as well, which has always been kind of a crowd pleaser. We've added even a little more pineapple to kind of like boost up the um, tropical vibes during there. And that's, that's always like a really fun, juicy, accessible one for folks that are maybe new to our lineup. So again, keep an eye out for those probably in late May um, coming to the Marlene's markets and, and the other stores that we sell in the Pacific Northwest. And with that, um, I'm going to bring this to a close and see if there's any questions. Um, I thank everyone for, for tuning in, whether you're here with us now or you're tuning into this, checking out later. I will say if you're kind of new to um, fermented products in general or fermented beverages, um, it's a little bit different for everyone. You know, everybody's microbiome is about as unique as their thumbprint, right? And so for each of us, we kind of have to learn how to sail our own ship in some ways, right? And no one, myself or anyone, really can't tell you what's right for your body. So again, if you're new to fermented beverages, I'd say start small. Um, start by maybe drinking like a quarter of a bottle to start to see how that sits with you. There's many folks who will drink multiple bottles a day and you might get up to that point as well. Um, but this is, this is a, um, a functional food in a lot of ways. So um, start small with it and to see how that sits with your body. And then you can kind of like scale up from there. And in terms of the use occasions and when people will try this, I mentioned, you know, first thing in the morning is really um, a place where people enjoy it. Um, for, for women who are pregnant, which is my wife at the moment, like who are, are dealing with morning sickness. Um, the ginger one in particular is like really soothing on the system, but it's also a great way to get um, a, a probiotic boost first thing in the morning. And for those that practice intermittent fasting, as I often do, um, you can drink like our ginger or our lime product and not break your fast. And so that's kind of a nice way to go to start your day. Uh, another way to go is like during lunchtime, drinking with, with lunch. People often find it's like a nice digestif and will kind of help with um, digesting lunch and stave off that kind of mid-afternoon lull that many people experience. And so that's another great time to try it. Um, and then lastly, um, end of day, you know, again, as a cocktail, mocktail, um, you can kind of use it instead of drinking alcohol. Many people enjoy that, dress it up by putting it in a, in a wine glass maybe or something, um, especially our beet product. Many people enjoy drinking it that way or use it as a healthier, better for you kind of cocktail mixer is a great way to go. And then, you know, since it's the weekend, you know, if you do happen to indulge and you're feeling a little bit heavy the next morning, um, people do find it's a wonderful hangover cure to kind of like get your whole system back into balance as well. And I have many friends that report that back to me also. So those are just a couple of ways that, to experiment with using it in your life. Um, and I hope you enjoy. And again, thank you so much for, for tuning in and, and cheers to your health. Thank you so much, Ryan. Um, wow. Um, I didn't even think about the postbiotics. And um, that that totally blew my mind. I was like, oh, yeah, because it starts working within the body and then creating those good enzymes and just feeding the gut right. Totally love it. And I do I do see, you know, for folks who are on the line here with us as well. Um, I just covered a lot of information to boogie through that, but I wanted to give the opportunity if you've had any questions, um, love to hear from you. So do any of the folks who are on the line have any have any questions that they want to ask? Yes, um, Shay asked, um, how long is um, the bottle um, good after opening and what is the serving size? That's great. Yeah, so um, if you keep the bottle in the refrigerator, I'd say, you know, three days is absolutely comfortable. Um, it's not going to go bad per se that's kept in the refrigerator, but what will happen through time is that the carbonation will kind of lift off of it. So, you know, even after five days, um, you can still enjoy it. I probably wouldn't, you know, wait for more than five days. That's probably about the sweet spot in terms of enjoying it afterwards, but um, to enjoy it over a five day period. Um, in terms of a serving size, that kind of gets back to what I mentioned earlier. It's sort of like you kind of have to feel that out for your own body. Um, in terms of like serving size on the package itself, one bottle is a serving size. For many folks, drinking a bottle a day, myself included, you know, that's, that's the perfect serving size. Um, if you're new, again, to fermented beverages, I'd say maybe start with a two ounce serving. A lot of folks find that that's a nice way to go. And you could do a two ounce serving and maybe once in the morning and once in the evening is a place to start and see how that sits with your body. 
for a lot of folks, like that's great. And then you can kind of increase from there. But um, I oftentimes will encourage folks to kind of start slow with it. Fabulous, thank you. And what I truly love about this product is that folks who have candida issues, mm. um, you know, they can't consume um, other fermented foods or kombuchas because it can cause further disruption. But with this product, it's gentle enough on the gut that you're able to get those good probiotics and be able to remove all that gunk out of the gut. <laughs> totally. Yeah, well put. And that that is that is kind of a a group of folks that we hear from a lot, actually, because yeah, like you said, in most kombuchas, you have two things that really kind of make the candida worse, right? There's the yeast in there. And then there's also, you know, oftentimes elevated levels of sugar. It's usually at least 12, 12 bottles, 12 grams per bottle, right? Which is then feeding that candida and oftentimes making it worse. So yeah, spot on. Um, great option for those folks. For sure. Well, I'm going to check the Facebook live chat and see if we got any questions. Fabulous. Oh, good. She hopped on the call, so she's here with us. Yay. Well, I am just so grateful for um, everyone at, at Bionic. Um, it's so amazing that it's family owned. I did not know that that photo, that adorable photo was your nephew. Mm -hmm. So sweet. He was really enjoying the product. He's like, this is delicious. And I think it's so great, um, you know, your everything, that y'all are setting forth and making a huge change in the um, probiotic um, drink world. So I I thank you and and your whole family for all you do. Oh, thank you so much, Elizabeth. And and I too want to give a shout out to Marlene's. Um, you know, I'll say from the brand side of things that I think the average customer maybe doesn't appreciate how much kind of power the retailer has about like what goes on their shelf or what that's like for a small brand like ours, like growing. And oftentimes it's, it's quite hard for a small brand to get on a grocery store shelf because there's a lot of fees and other things that are associated with that. And as a result, that kind of favors the really large established companies and it kind of drives further consolidation, which I think we all can understand why that's challenging and maybe not the best ultimately for the consumer and the food system. But Marlene's market is the absolute opposite of that like even you know when I first sat down with Ashley the buyer there and the whole team has just been absolutely delightful and we oftentimes talk about partnering with retailers and Marlene's is absolutely a true partner that's helping you know small emerging brands like ours really kind of like thrive in this ecosystem and so you all invited us in um really fair with the pricing which is awesome but then you know partnered to introduce your community to our products as well in ways like this educational offering and the articles and, and various things that we've done as well. So, um, you know, huge gratitude to you all for, for really helping create a better food system by, by partnering with brands like ours in that way. Um, it's, it means a lot to us, thank you. Oh, yes, thank you, Ryan. And, um, you know, um, we, are, we are just so grateful for um, brands like yours making an impact in the community and then we can be able to highlight all that you do your amazing products and we're so honored so thank you thank you all well unless there's any other questions um i will bid you all adieu and thank you so much and, and just wish everyone a wonderful weekend ahead Yes, definitely. Thanks for everyone who uh, tuned in um, on the Zoom meeting and Facebook Live. Um, I'm going to attach um, on the Facebook Live feed also um, the article that you had written, um, and that's available on our website. So um, thanks again, everyone, for tuning in, and have a wonderful weekend. Take care, everyone. Thanks. Thank you.